We have Larry Akunda here live with us. Good to have you, Larry. Hi. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, so uh, let's jump straight to what it is. Great win you had against Dale Evans. What was the approach you, you took towards getting that victory in that bout? Um, it was, it was, um, I actually have to prepare extra for him because he was a top prospect oh. at the time. Um, we, we had a fight. Um, uh, the training camp was amazing. Um, thanks to my team. And, um, yeah, it was, it was a tough kid. And, um, I, I actually, um, have to kind of adapt to his style because he's more of a, of aggressive fighter. So I just have to box and, um, and, um, I came on top. All right. Uh, how, how tough was it for you to come over with that victory? Um, it's not the, the fact that it was, um, it was a good fighter or tough, but it's the fact that I have to make a statement because um, I won the prize fighter like middleweight and he got to the final and almost beat the champion at the time, a welterweight. Mm. So he's a British fighter and a lot of people rate him. And um, there was a lot of um, conversation going on prior to the fight saying he's a big puncher. I wasn't a big puncher and some of his um, supporters were kind of like slagging me off. Like I'm a, I'm just a hype fighter, so I have to actually make a statement by telling them I can punch. So, and the, I think this is the reason why I find it tough because mentally I have to be in there to prove a point. So that was that was the reason why I find it tough because um, I have to make the statement by knocking them out. All right. Now, talking about ratings now, because uh, it felt like Dale had more ratings than you before that fight. But after the fight, how would you rate Dale compared to other fighters that you have faced? Um, he's just one of the top um, in my weight division. And um, I have four other good fighters as well that's above, that I will rate above him. Mm. But I'll probably put him in number seven. Out of 10. Okay. Now, let's talk about your um, fight routine. Uh, what is it like for your training routine before a major fight? Depending on the opponent. Yeah. Depending on the opponent. Um, but we, myself and my, um, my team and I, we have a, a normal routine where we train twice a day. But with me, I, I usually do extra. Um, so sometimes I train three times a day, depending on the program that was drawn before. And if I feel like I need to do a bit extra, uh, I put in the extra work. Mm. All right. Now, talking about you and Ben Gray, you seem to have a great relationship uh, with him. Tell us more about this. Ben Gray is actually my commercial agent. Um, uh, my manager is MTK Global. So the same um, uh, management company with Tyson Fury. Yeah. Um, uh, ben Gray and I, we we've come a long way. Um, ben was actually my my guy that I trained. Mm. That's how we met. Ben used to work with um, the former um, manager and promoter of Lennox Lewis, and Ben boxed himself. So. He came to. He was training for a fight, so he came to the gym that I was using then, and he was asked to train with the former British champion Darren Hamilton, and he saw me sparring, and he asked, he asked the the guys that were showing him around, like, can I train with that guy? And that's how we met. So ever since, he's been on my corner, and honestly, if it wasn't for Ben, I wouldn't be boxing. So, yeah, we have a great relationship. Yeah, now t take us through your journey from Nigeria to the UK, starting from the streets of uh, Lagos, how you started off uh, boxing and how you got discovered until you turned pro. 
I started off boxing. Um, I started boxing just like a, like a regular kid, you know, um, doing it just for self defence. Um, before I know it, I represented Lagos State at the um, Emo ninety eight National Sport Festival. I was a bantamweight. Uh, I won gold there. Obviously, my coach that trains me there at the for my amateur club, my club was called Ashimata Boxing Gym. It was at Ilupeji. My coach name is um, Adekule Fasheso. He's a very disciplined man. And I think he actually shaped me to who I am today. Um, he doesn't tolerate any nonsense. And discipline is one thing that that man installed in, my, in me and the rest of the fighters. And... So I won gold for Lagos State at National Sport Festival, 98. Um, two years after, I moved up weight from Bantamweight to Welterweight uh, to the, um, what do you call it, the National Sport Festival, which was in Bauchi 2000. I also won gold there. In 99, I qualified for the All-African Games in South Africa. I couldn't make the weight, so that's why I moved up to work away. Uh, after that, represented Nigeria in Germany. Um, it's a friendly tournament where I won gold in 2002. From Germany, we moved to Manchester for the Commonwealth Games. In Manchester, I lost at a court final. Uh, um, I had a, a manager then from Kronk Boxing Gym over here that, that wanted to sign me. So that's how I ended up in England and based here. And Tom Pro in 2012 won two fights, had two fights in my name, then went on to win Prize Fighter, where I beat three guys in one night to be crowned the Prize Fighter champion. And I was ranked number two in Great Britain then. As a light, um, as a light middleweight, then move back down. So yeah, that's that's the journey, really. But my main goal is to fight, have a world title in Nigeria. So that's that's what we're working towards. All right. Um, let's talk about the name, the natural, because a whole lot of people have been asking me, why do you call yourself the natural? I'd like you to put that out there right now. Actually, I wasn't the, the, the person that uh, I wasn't, I didn't give myself the name, actually. Um, I was sparring with um, one of the, this guy, he was, he was meant to come and spar my, my mate, Tony Salam, um, then. But Tony wasn't available. He was a um, few weeks above me, and he was really, really ferocious. And that was, that's his actually boxer name. Um, I was asked to spar him, and he was a really good sparring. He had a lot of audience, like a lot of interact with him, had a gym. Um, they came down, and yeah, it was, it, was, it was a great sparring. And my former manager, Spencer Fury, and his, um, his um, partner gave me the name The Natural. So that's how the name come about. It wasn't, it wasn't, I didn't even think about the natural. So I just, I was given the name and I just said, well, yeah, why not? All right. Uh, let, let's talk about um, the world champion now, Anthony Joshua. Has he been supportive uh, towards your quest? Yes, of course. Of course. Um, Anthony is a nice, is a nice guy. Um, always supportive of everyone that's doing well especially the Nigerians as well, um, that's coming up. Um, yeah, it's, it's always supportive. Then Nigerian fighters, how do you think um, we can get to break that jinx and get out there and get more um, known in the world of boxing? We have so many fighters here in England that's Nigerian decent. Mm -hmm. And we have all over the world that's doing Nigeria proud, that's keeping the flag flying, changing the perception of Nigeria around the globe. 
But first, we need to actually work on our grass, our grassroots boxes. Yeah. Um, we've got so many talented fighters, and I think the only way we can do that is to give them an exit, having for them to get out of the country, have exposure, represent Nigeria, um, in 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 all these big tournament and starting a training camp on time, giving them the facility that they need and, and the support. I think we have more than 20 Anthony Joshua walking around Lagos alone. Mm. So if we have the support from not just the government, but the, the private sector as well, if they can invest in, in this um, sport of boxing, I think we will do well in the world. True. Now, talking, talking about the Nigerian boxers now, they, some of them do not even know when the next opportunity will come for them to show their worth. Now, is there anything you plan on doing for these young boxers? All I can do is keep making noise, as I've been doing. But I can't do it myself. So I'm going to say thank you to you guys for giving me this opportunity and this platform to say these things and hopefully we have the right people to hear about it and see if they can they can make any adjustments on that um that being said for me i'm trying all i can do to put myself in a position where i can help other fighters um having opportunity to come out the country they can come here perhaps participate in, participate in in any tournament here and for them to know when they come over, there's, there's a gene for them to use. And the facilities is always going to be here. But also, I want to have my own boxing academy in Nigeria. So we're still working on that. And hopefully, everything put through soon. All right, thank you. Would you want to give us a word of advice to the young boxers out there? Just... Stay focused. Um, as you mentioned earlier, you said some of these guys don't even know when the opportunity comes. I was in that position before. So if anyone is out there listening to this, keep pushing. Keep pushing. Please don't give up. And also for, the, for you guys, what you're doing, I want to say thank you so much because... If we have, I've mentioned this before, if we have a TV platform for the um, Nigerian fighters that give them at least, even if it's one night or in maybe weekend or one, one day of the week to show the, 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 the grassroots fighters, that we encourage other peoples and also let the Nigerian citizen know their, their, their fellow fighters. So thank you to you guys, and hopefully we have more of you guys to help the young um, grassroots fighters by giving them a TV platform. Mm. Thank you very much, Larry, for the interesting conversation. Thank you for having me. Yes, it, it indeed was great, and we hope to keep growing boxing and make sure that we, our voices will be heard. And these boxers will surely be heard out there and, of course, uh, represent Nigeria and get us to win more of those world championships.